Hello guys and welcome to episode 3 of Escape the Cat Overlord series and today we're going to talk about flat pattern nesting or 2D uh, nesting, right? It's a very important subject if you are doing production of any sheet metal or even wood that's 2D cut uh, part or assembly. So uh, without further ado, let's jump in. And I've made this uh, uh, assembly. This is just, you know, cool looking model, I think, for uh, as, uh, to use it as an example, right? So we will need uh, this to get a flat pattern of this. We'll need to get a flat pattern of this clamp, which is supposed to be here. And then you rivet it in and that holds everything into place and reinforces these very thin side panels. And then you've got these two bars with beautiful, beautiful 3D threads. And that's a G one and a half inch pipe thread model in 3D straight from the new capabilities of Alibre V28.1. So how do we uh, go about uh, nesting, right? So first of all, we'll open this part and we'll click, sorry, <laughs> we'll click here where it says flat pattern and we got the flat pattern. And Alibre has this great thing where it allows you to sketch on the flat pattern, right? Okay, so I'll start imprinting these surfaces with the trick I explain in, in a lot of detail in my Engineer React video, right? So uh, I imprinted everything. Now I'm going to select everything, Control A, and just make it into a uh, geometry. And then I'm gonna go and select the bend lines only and turn them back into a reference. I will finish my sketch and then export to SVG. I don't wanna include the reference figures. I'll call this the flat bar. Okay, okay, we're good. Um, and now I need to, you know, make this into the bent part again. And I will do this for this end clamp as well. Flat pattern, imprinting. All right, I start the sketch by imprinting. So, yeah, I saved a bit of time. Again, if you want to uh, see how I do this, go check out my Engineer Reacts video. Now I will make all of the bend lines into a reference line. Okay, that's my second sketch. Export to SVG, and that is the end clamp. Very cool. And finally, uh, I forgot. So yeah, don't don't forget to to make this to return this to its uh, original uh, bent. <laughs> state because the entire assembly is going to fall apart and now the the side panels which they don't have a bent form they're just a 2d cut so i imprint everything turn everything into a geometry and i'm good to go i'll export this as an svg that is the side panel excellent now um i am going to bring these um, files into Inkscape for uh, a bit of processing. Uh, and why is that? Well, when you're exporting SVG from a Libre, first of all, you see that I don't see anything. But if I hit Control A, there's my drawing. So uh, the lines are too thin. I go to Stroke and Style. I say width of one pixel, and uh, now it's more usable. It's also outside the uh, paper space. I don't care about that. Uh, does make a difference to what we're doing. So this is good to go. And I'll do the end clump as well. Okay, stroke and style with one pixel, save. And let's do the side panel now. Okay, stroke and style with one pixel. And there we are. We're good to go. Save this, close it. And now guys, we are done with Alibre and Inkscape, and uh, we'll open up DeepNest IO. And this is a great uh, piece of software. So uh, th these are the configurations, and um, and you can see the display units. Uh, you can set up the uh, space between the parts. What's very nice with it is that for every uh, text box or option that you hover over, you get a very very uh, helpful tip on the right of it right on the right side of the screen so for example part rotations if you if you set it to eight you get eight uh, different potential rotations of your part as it is nesting i have i have a 150 degree uh, angle in the side panel so that's uh, why i put it this up to 12 so that it can potentially turn it so that one is straight up you know 
maybe help it a little bit. Uh, these are the three options for the optimization type. I usually use squeeze. And uh, here's the SVG scale, right? Now, this is something that you might need to set. Um, and uh, it says that it is 90 units per inch for Inkscape, right? So I'll start the calculator here. And uh, 90 units divided by an inch would be this number for uh, millimeters. I'll use this number. I will import a an SVG. You will see that it is the wrong number, and I will uh, show you how to get uh, to the correct one. Um, optimization ratio, merge common lines. That's how you save a bit of time when you're cutting with a laser. Optimization ratio. If you set it to zero, you're optimizing space. You set it to one, you are also optimizing time. I don't want that. You know what? I'll, I don't want to merge the common lines. And these are the genetic algorithm uh, uh, parameters. These are the two basic parameters in any genetic algorithm. And, um, you know, uh, let me know if you want to do uh, a deeper dive in genetic algorithms. Uh, Excel has a beautiful implementation of them. Uh, Python has an implementation of them. MATLAB does as well. Octave, they all do. But uh, the initial population is the, the number of different uh, nests that it'll try uh, to start with and then optimize. The mutation rate is how many random nests it will inject in there and then test for fit. Um, it's not an actual ram number here. This is, you can you, think of it, of this more than, like a scale. Um, so I'll, I have that set as 10 and 20, um, 12. Yeah, that might make more sense. So let's go and import our first uh, SVG. Now notice that it comes in as 1649.1 millimeters, right? 1649 millimeters point one. And this is 152. That's, that's the wrong scale. Now, I don't want to open a library book up, but this uh, is actually uh, 1,546 millimeters by 142.5 millimeters. So the reason this is wrong is the scale. So what do we do? First of all, you need to uh, delete that. You select it and you hit this little trash can. So this is what we need to change. And how do you do it? Well, first of all, you copy this number, then you go into a calculator and you input this number, multiply it, you open a parenthesis and you say the um, value that you got divided by the value that your part actually is. And you hit enter and that is the scale that you need to input. Right? That's the scale that works correctly. So I input that scale, I'll import the flat bar again and there you go. Right, It's perfect now. So I can import my end clamp now. Uh, and I can import my side side panel. Come on, there you go. So, um, how many of these do I want? Well, well, let's try and nest a single set, right? And then we'll see um, if a single set nests nicely on a couple of sheets uh, uh, of stock. Uh, then we know that we can uh, scale our production, and for every set we need two sheets of sheet stock. Uh, if it doesn't, we can do another nest and we'll see uh, what's what. So for a single set, we'd need nine of these, right? So I, I select this and I change the number. We need 18 of these and we need two of these. Um, and we also need our sheet stock. So I can have a SVG or a DXF. By the way, you can also import DXF here, right? Um, or I can just hit plus down here and add a rectangle of width. So... Um, let let me get my calculator out again. So let's say I'm gonna use a sheet stock of 60 by 120 inches, right? So let's go here. This is 60 times. So this is. And you see that's not going to go well, right? You can see this, uh, and that's 120. So this is just this times two, and I'll tell it that this is actually my sheet, and let's say that I have. Three of these. Um, you know what? This is marginally smaller than this. So for for argument's sake, because you know, I don't want this to go horribly wrong and spend hours here. I'll just make this 1560. That should cover the tolerance I have. Right? Just like this. Uh, in the real world, what you would do is you would make your seat slightly narrower 
so you can cheat like the 20 millimeters you need from here or 30 or 40 or whatever okay now i'll add my uh, uh, sheet i will click this checkbox which means this is what you are nesting in and how many of these sheets i have i have three now check this out Mol nesting across multiple sheets is something that infusion 360 is behind the second paywall so you subscribe to the software and you get fusion 360 it's got this arrange function which is basic it works okay but it's basic and if you want to nest um, a set across multiple uh, sheets you need to buy the manufacturing extension at a cost of two thousand dollars in the u.s in europe it's more uh, two thousand dollars a year so deep nest io uh free software and let's see if it works so we click here and um, we're transferred to this area so what's placed it's telling me that already with using only two sheets it's it has placed all 29 parts okay so this is what it, it is using to place them so these are uh, you know we placed all nine parts in two sheets. Um, now, these are the different sets. So I'm, I'm not happy with this, what I'm getting. Uh, you can see that this uh, setup is a bit more fragmenting, fragmented than this one, right? Yeah, it'll eventually wise up and, and uh, understand that it can actually put it uh, across. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I'll just stop it. I'll go back. And I'll up the number here. So I'll say two sets. Let's see if we can fit two sets in three sheets. So I'll say here, going up to um, 18. This is 36. This is four. I'll go into my uh, options here. And I'll turn this um, into, an, into a four. And I want to also optimize for time. So I'll turn that option into a one. Let's start nesting again. Okay. So, all 58 parts placed from the first nest. And uh, and now we're using all three sheets. So, it's, it's uh, you know, it's pretty impressive, right? I mean, this this is... Look at this. This is nice. Uh, this is nice work. Now, let's see... So I've left it going for a while, and it says now up here that sheets used two. So it was three before, and it's been going for a while, and it managed to find a way to um, put every part on on only two sheets, right? Uh, we You can see here the older nesting options by clicking on them, right? So this one uses three sheets. If you scroll down... You can see how this is placed. There's the three uh, sheets. This is one of the early um, setups. Uh, and now here we are at our best nest so far. This is how it's doing it. And it's fitting everything in only two sheets. Right? Plus, you'll see that uh, it is also trying and where it can. Uh, leave a, a square space unpopulated so this is potentially something you can use as a remnant in another cut so yeah we'll, we'll do one final nest here right and I'll, I'll kick it up a notch and i'll say that i want so i want 27 of these which will bring this up to 52 and this up to six so this is three sets and i'll still ask it to fit all of these in three uh, pieces of sheet stock. Uh, let's see if it can do it. So I'll start my nesting. So now we've got 85 parts in total. It's using all three sheets, but it hasn't placed all of the parts yet. Right, so now we're pushing it. Now it needs to think, right? Okay, 84 out of the 85 parts. So, we might end up using three sheets for three sets. It seems that for this particular sheet size, um, three sets is not doable.
but we did get a but we did get a nest that did two sets in two sheets uh, of stock which is um, the best one that i would use and i think uh we can uh, conclude our demonstration of deep nest io guys this is a really really powerful uh, piece of software um, nesting is a very very time consuming procedure and you will be paying for that time if you don't do it yourself you will be paying at the manufacturer so it is always better to just export a dxf from here and tell it look i want this cut don't ask why just cut this right it always helps and uh, and the guys will appreciate it you're taking responsibility for it you're also reducing time that they will be spending not cutting they will appreciate it and all in all an amazing an amazing performance by a free software right so this was the deep nest io uh thoughts down in the comments uh, tell me what you liked uh tell me what you didn't like and if you liked the video hit like uh and if you want to see more uh, hit subscribe and follow the series catch you in the next one